We are stuck. All we did, we're trying to do is back up in this beautiful boondocking spot and oh my god. Okay, we're sick. We are stuck. All we did, we're trying to do is back up in this beautiful boondocking spot and oh my gosh. Wow. Just trying to turn around and this is like the worst spot ever. Oh, I hope we can get out. Yeah, that's a pickle. We are. Oh my goodness. Please work. Come on, go Tritz. Oh my God, you are so good, but holy cow, we were so close to that tree hitting it. Oh. And look at this mess. Go treads have just paid for themselves a million times over, wouldn't you say? Go treads, baby. Go treads. Save the day from a novice off-roader. Um, yeah. Your beefy BF Goodrich KO two tires are only as good as well. Yeah, that was a close one. Can you get those out? Really? <laughs> Are you... Oh my goodness. <laughs> this was a real bad... Wow. <laughs> if they could call mud quicksand, this would be it. You know, we've done some uh, off-roading in our time. A small vehicle. But you gotta really tread lightly or know what you're doing when you're talking 10,000 plus, plus pounds vehicle. Just got a little lazy or maybe we just haven't been out off-roading enough. You're just gonna make a nice turnaround around the tree and then you go and get yourself buried. Total amateur move. I can't tell you how important it is to walk that area first. It would have been so easy. I mean, it's just some snow melt here. You could never tell it was this thick. I mean, you're talking six inches. That front, I mean, that front tire was buried eight inches. Just total amateur move, but hey, you learn and thank you for the go treads. You cannot not be out here without traction control or traction devices, but <clears throat> Go treads that since they're levelers, they just fold up, go in the back of the van. You know, I don't have to strap them to anything. Whew. I loved them already, but I really like them now. Don't be an amateur. Get out and walk the area first. So we've been letting these go treads dry out. We scraped off the big chunks and stuff, but what's amazing is look at the way this just flakes off. It's like it's like it's on Teflon. I guess maybe that's the way they're designed. But I think all you'd have to do is just shake them. Look at that. Uh, liking it more and more. Way to go, go thread, go treads. Well, after that, a big adventure and challenge, we decided to have a little dinner. And this is the way we like to cook. Keep the splatter outside. Our old Bicycling camp setup, titanium stove. But look at these tires. Actually, they look pretty good, don't they? Must say so myself. This is quite the adventure van. What I didn't say is when we got stuck, I had to put that thing in four wheel drive and four low. 
and I, I was afraid I was gonna have to move forward, but they both engaged, which was very fortunate because I really think that had a lot to do with getting us out of this predicament. Quite the adventure van. Came in handy today. Don't try this in a Travato. Good morning from a windy, uh, yeah. I'm sorry we don't have the good camera, but we're in a hurry to get out of here. As you will see. We spent the night in that place that we got stuck at yesterday. And two things that are a concern, our tires are impacted with mud, so we have no traction. Still, well, you can't, well, you can see the glisten, muddy. Also, something about the Sprinter van, we're at 7,300 feet and it's a dog <laughs> off the line. So yeah. if you want to get rolling, it takes a while um, to get those turbos spooled up. Yes. Terrible at altitude. Cool. A good thing is, is we're going to Murphy's Law it and, and leave our traction devices out. Hope you can hear us, I'm sure. Uh, so if we leave them out there, hopefully we won't need them. Yeah, that's what's going to happen with Murphy's Law. We won't need them if we leave them out. If we put them away, we'll, we'll need them. And then the number of other good thing is we're already in low four. So cross your fingers and uh, let's see if we can get out of here without having to call somebody. I'm crossing my fingers and my toes for this one. Go baby, go! Ugh! Thank you everybody for crossing your toes and your fingers. Oh my gosh. This had angst on me at least all night long. <laughs> oh, he's good. And that four by four is good too. Woo! <laughs> I was up for hours worrying about this. Uh, You're so good. It was at low four, but you could hear it as I was leaving. You could hear it kind of as those that turbo spooled up, how we just kind of shut off. So you always got to leave yourself a little bit of room to get those turbos spooled up when you're at altitude, 7,300 feet. But all good. All good. Let's go on down to Prisky. All right. So as we have escaped our boondocking campsite. Phew. There's a couple things to take away. And it's not that we're total newbies at off-roading, but it's been a long time since we've done it. And we weren't just really doing a lot of thinking, but we should have thought, hey, we're at altitude, we're gonna need our runoff. That's one of our prerequisites at high altitude is we need a little time to spool up the turbos. Number two is, uh, like they say, turn around, don't drown. We've kind of come up with a motto that, hey, when in doubt, walk about. I think that's good. It's Maybe really somebody's good. already come up with that, but we shouldn't have been, we should have just got out and walked the area and we would have known it. I mean, we've lived in climates like this, so we know what snow melt can do. It can kind of make dirty areas discreetly hidden from being muddy areas. But, uh, so yesterday was amateur hour. <laughs> Thank goodness we didn't have another amateur hour this morning. And we'll learn from the experience. And we're on. Let's go somewhere else where there's pavement, baby. We be gone. We be gone. <laughs>